Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is kind of go through um, how we're going to evaluate some functions by using period as an aid. And basically what I mean with period as an aid is you can look at all these angles and each of these, or each of these functions I've given an angle. And we're going to find this angle on the unit circle. However, the kind of, <clears throat> What makes this problem tricky is you can see that all these angles are not angles that we're readily you know, used to um, <clears throat> within just on the unit circle. Because all of these angles are, what are over one revolution of an angle. So you know, if, remember, we always start here at our initial side. Well, all of these are larger than one revolution around. So I'm going to have to go over once to then find the angle. Now, what I did is <clears throat> I drew the angle. Um, I did, well, let's just look at a half here, half of, the, half of a circle. Um, I did the black line and would be in halves, which would help us with um, the problem number two. I did the blue in, in six, which will help us with the thirds as well as the six, so we can go up to one thirds. And I did the red um, in for the fourths. So we could do one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. So I kind of broke it up that way to kind of help us along. However, when doing a problem like this, we can go ahead and simply, you know, if I want to do 11 pi over four, we know that one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, six pi, seven pi, and you can keep on going all the way around. But it kind of gets a little cumbersome doing that, especially with all these problems that we're going to have to do. So the best thing that we like to do is we know that one revolution, if we go all the way over 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, if I go all the way around, I'm right back where I started. So therefore, 8 pi over 4 is just like an extra revolution. So what I want to do is I want to be able to see, well, how many times can I write 11 pi over 4 including 8 pi over 4, which is the extra revolution. Well, that actually becomes 8 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4. And we know that 8 pi over 4 is just an extra revolution, right? So therefore, really what I'm trying to evaluate for is the sine of 3 pi over 4. Well, the sine of 3 pi over 4, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 which is the, the exact same angle over here, except it's been, instead of being the first quadrant, or the exact same point, but instead of being the first quadrant, it's now in the third quadrant. That means that the y coordinate, which represents for sine, is, remember the sine represents the y coordinate for a unit circle, is going to be negative. So therefore, this answer is negative square root of 2 over 2. So for cosine, um, let's go and take a look at this. So this is broken up into halves. So it'd be 1 pi halves, 2 pi halves, or 2. Um, so therefore, 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves, 4 halves. That means 4 halves is one revolution. So what I'm going to want to do is break this up into 4 pi over 2 plus 4 pi over 2 plus 1 pi over 2. And so you see how all of those add up to 9 pi? But it's important about this is 4 pi over 2 is the same thing as 2 pi, which is one revolution. So therefore, really, this is just redundant information. So now I, all I really need to do is figure out what is the cosine of pi halves. Well, cosine of pi halves is right there. Oops, I didn't give this one, which would be 0 comma 1. Remember, cosine represents the x coordinate. So therefore, this problem is going to be 0. All right, now let's go with tangent. Now remember, tangent's y over x. Um, and this one, can, this one sometimes gets a little tricky when we're dealing with negative numbers. Okay, but again, the same thing is just, you know, we're just trying to get rid of revolutions, and that's really about it. Um, <clears throat> so negative 3 pi over 3, so therefore we're dealing with our thirds. So it's going to be 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, right? 4 thirds, 5 thirds, 6 thirds. So I have tan of 6 pi over 3. Well, can I compute another 6 pi over 3? Yes, I can. And actually, since this is negative, all of these are going to be negative. So that's a negative 6 pi over 3. So if I have negative 6 pi over 3 plus negative 6 pi over 3, we add the numerators, keep the denominator same. That means I'm going to need one more negative pi over 3. Those are redundant. And therefore, I just need to find now the tangent of negative pi over 3. So now, instead of going up, it's going negative direction, which is going down. So that's going to be negative pi over 3, um, which is going to be this point. Since it's in the fourth quadrant, my x is going to be the same, but my y is square root of 3 over 2. Now remember, tangent is y over x. So I'm going to take my x coordinate and my y coordinate. So I'm going to put the y coordinate, which I'm going to do the work here, um, is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. The twos will cancel out or divide out to each other, and I have a negative 3 over 1. So therefore, the final answer here is 
negative square root of 3. And I know I'm kind of getting right to the end of my little things there, but you can see that's a negative square root of 3. All right, cosecant. So now we're going to do, um, again, we know that, so if you, what you've noticed, if you notice the revolution is always double what the de denominator is, right? So therefore, we can say one revolution of when it's broken into 6 would be 12 pi over 6. So therefore, that's going to be cosecant of 12 pi over 6. And you can see I can only do one revolution. The next one would be 24. So 12 pi over 6 plus 10 pi over 6. Well, 10 pi over 6, you know, we could even count 10 pi over 6, or we could also reduce that by dividing the top and the bottom by 2. And what we would get is 5 thirds. So that equals cosecant of 5 pi over 3. So now, let's again go through this. So we go 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds. Again, we're actually using the exact same point we did for the last one, but now we're doing cosecant, which is going to be 1 over sine, so that's, or which would be 1 over y, so that's going to be 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2. Now in this case, here I can't just divide out that denominator. The 2 is just like don't divide out like I did the last problem. Here, I'll have to multiply <clears throat> by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom. That is going to multiply to 1. Therefore, I'm left with 1 over, or 1 times 2. So it's going to be 2 over uh, negative square root of 3. So therefore, to get rid of the denominator in the bottom, I'm going to have to multiply. I'm going to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the square root of 3 on the top and the bottom. And I'm finally left with negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. So let's, I'll write that in there, even though I know I'm running out of space here. But uh, the answer for cosecant of 22 pi over 6 or cosecant of 5 pi over 3, it's the same thing, is negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. <clears throat> All right, so let's go into secant. Well, if you notice here, secant, one revolution, and this is negative, but it would be you know, 2 pi, right? So therefore, I can write secant as negative 2 pi plus negative 2 pi plus negative pi. That's the same thing as negative pi. Well, these are just revolutions. So therefore, what is the secant of, of negative 1 pi, which is right here? Well, remember, sec um, secant is 1 over x. Well, the x coordinate here is negative 1. So therefore, the answer is going to just be negative 1. And the last one we have here is cotangent. Um, so therefore, in this one, we're going to have uh, 6 pi over 3 plus 5 pi over 3. That's a constant revolution. So now I need to find the cotangent of 5 pi over 3. So 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, again. Um, 5 pi over 3, and that's cotangent, which is now going to be x over y. So that will be. Let's see here. 1 half divided by negative square root of 3 over 2. Here, the 2's are going to divide out. And therefore, I'm left with negative 1, oh, I'm sorry, 1 over negative square root of 3. Again, I will rationalize the denominator. And I'm left with the square root of 3 over negative 3. So my final answer here is negative square root of 3 over 3. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you use period as an aid. That is how you use period as an aid um, to evaluate for your trigonometric functions. Thanks.